Well, okay, here we are. Hope some folks will join in here in just a few minutes. I wanted to review today the winter 2020 brush update for Photoshop and Fresco. Lots of fun brushes in here to talk about. And uh, I'm just gonna jump right in and we'll take a look at what we have here. So um, the sketch that we have right here is just something I was doodling while I was waiting for this to start. But this is a great example of how you can combine some of these brushes uh, for some interesting effects. I was using the Felty brush, which is the only brush I've included um, really in this brush set for drawing since already there are so many drawing brushes available uh, for everybody out there in the Mega Pack and in the previous updates we've done. But don't worry, I will be adding some more brushes for drawing in the next brush set for the spring of 2021. Uh, but for this, uh, for this particular set, we're really focusing on a lot of special effects brushes, some half tones, and some other goodies. So I'll jump right in with this brush. So this is the Felty, and uh, this is a nice sort of uh, felt kind of brush. And by the way, you'll have to excuse me while I'm drawing, I'm having some issues with my Wacom tablet here. Um, the latest Mac OS update has done something weird and I now when I draw get these lines like you can see here where um, I'm using the same amount of pressure as what I was using before there and uh, for whatever reason the line gets skinnier so i um, not sure what's going on there but I've had this happen on my drawing show as well so if you see something funny happen like that I'll point it out just so you know it's not the brush um, also I want to remind everybody uh, these are for Photoshop uh, CC subscribers who are um, using the latest version and uh, all you have to do to get all these brushes every time you want to update is simply go to this little menu here and this little drop down we call it a hamburger menu is going to allow you to get more brushes if you tap on that it's going to open up a link to the brushes download page just sign in and grab them now you can do the same thing from within fresco at the bottom of the brush menu you'll see a little plus sign and if you tap on that plus sign, you'll see the option to add more brushes and you can go grab them there. Um, by the way, I can see folks in the chat here. So I'll say hello really quickly. Hey, Tate, nice to see you. And Ira, thank you for joining me. Hi, I am Rudicus. I know who that is. Uh, good to see you as well. Um, all right, so let's go through these. Anyway, this, this is like a felt tip kind of a, a brush, but very, very simple to draw with. I, don't, I didn't want this one to be fancy at all. This is kind of like a, if you're used to doing a really kind um, fixed kind of line weight okay you can achieve that with this and still get the tiniest bit of texture um, and irregularity with the line but really it's so minimal you'd hardly notice it then again it's still different from the basic round brush you know you don't want to go in that kind of territory uh, I'm always interested in making something a little more interesting than that of course now that's what I use to draw uh, this person's face here but then for the hair I'm just jump up here to this set of brushes we have called the rattan brushes and I really like these. Um, now one of them is, is quite large and this one you can use for just throwing in some texture uh, anywhere. I like to use it inside selections for example so just as a demonstration I'll make a little selection here. So let's imagine you're drawing some kind of a tree okay and you want to give it some nice sort of barky texture or something all right, well, grab that rattan brush, and just go nuts in there like this, and then grab another value. So a little bit lighter here, go like this, and then come over that. See that? Isn't that fun? And of course you can change the size however you like, and maybe throw some highlights here, and maybe the light is hitting it on the right side. You know what I mean? There we go, not bad. Okie dokie. And my iPad has completely run out of batteries, but I'll be able to check the chat here um, on my other screen so I can still see folks. Uh, yeah, and let me know if you have any questions as I go. But there is a really nice demonstration with that rattan brush. You can see how that works. Now, without painting inside a selection, I'll just show you the basic quality of it. So what I've done with this brush is I added a dual brush mode that is subtracting from every stroke all right, with this nice pattern. And so no stroke is gonna be like the first. Uh, everything is gonna be completely unique. So if I do this one time, the next time I draw with it, totally different. Next time I draw with it, totally different. 
So uh, this is really fun for adding texture. I like this crisscross thing you can do too, where I just come across like this and get this neat kind of hatching pattern. So I can imagine some interesting ways to use this in comics. You know, if you especially have to do some kind of a textured, a wall that's made out of woven uh, sticks or something like that, or maybe you're doing some kind of fencing or I don't know, some brush in the woods. Lots of ways to figure out how to use that, but there's a variant of it here which responds to pen pressure. Now what I like about this one is I was able to do this hair that you saw in that original drawing for this person here, simply by varying the pressure in the direction that I was moving. Um, now if you wanted to, you could even size this down as an interesting inking tool. So maybe I lied a little bit when I said there wasn't another inking tool in here because you could do some pretty cool stuff with this, as you can see, right? If I wanna have an interesting quality to the line work I'm doing for something, well, here's an option. Like so, and then just go ahead and actually make it larger again for that hair and just kind of throw that in kind of crazy. There we go. Who knows? I know you'll figure out some neat ways to use all of these, but I just like to throw out a couple of ideas for Inspirato so you can take those and uh, maybe they'll inspire you to do something cool. All right, now we do have a chunk of um, halftone brushes here and I decided to give you different sizes this time rather than have you size them up or down yourself. However, just as a reminder for all the halftone brushes, if you wanna resize them, you go into your brush settings and go to texture. And if you look at where it says scale here at the top, that's what you play around with, okay? So that scale is gonna give you the size that you want uh, for that brush. But there are presets here now, so you don't have to mess around with that. And all of these respond to pen pressure. So as I use more and more pressure, I eventually get to a solid black, okay? And I like this one, it's called Hexastar Star because, well, it's a hexagonal star. Um, we have a really large vari uh, version of it. We have a really small one, which could be good for comics, manga, things like that. You need to fill in a little tone somewhere. You can just do that and get a nice gradient from light to dark and working my way eventually up to a really dark tone. Eventually I'll get to black. If I just keep on scrubbing. So you really have a lot of control there. Um, now all these halftones do the same thing. So we have this uh, Budapest one. This one is just really interesting. Um, I could see you using this for patterns, for clothing, a carpet, wallpaper, or whatever in an illustration. Um, but I know you'll find other ways to use it as well. Sometimes it's cool to just lay a texture over something just because. Um, and uh, I think that that's a fun thing to do as well. Different sizes of this one, and you'll see what the pattern looks like. If really, really light texture, you're just gonna get these separated marks, and as I use more and more pressure, I eventually get around to that. So, do with that what you will. Um, got the Manga Split Brush, it's called that, because I've seen this kind of texture in Manga, so I wanted to reproduce that for all of you people who like to use these half tones for your comics like this. Um, and again, this one, very small, so you know, at print size, probably looks something about like that. Hope that helps. Um, let's see, any questions? Nope, no questions. All right, gang, good. Moving on. Uh, we have this tic-tac-toe brush, which is of course another half tone. And you can see why I called it tic-tac-toe because of that pattern with the X's and the O's, so to speak. Uh, this one's nice because the light texture pattern is very different from as you get into the darker values. So you move from sort of a reverse. You get these, these dots with these X's, and as you get along to the darker side, haha, no Star Wars jokes here, you're gonna have a completely different pattern that you're looking at. So pretty versatile there. Iberia, um, I'll show you the large version of this because it looks fun, nice to look at. And you can see what this one does. Oh, very nice. Find ways to play with these. There are so many of them. Here's the Fidget S, which of course, you know, I'm sure you can figure out what inspired this. Good old fidget spinner. Based on that shape you see there. 
Um, and finally, we have the cardigan. Okay, so that is what it is, cardigan. You know, I was thinking about sweaters and patterns and things like that. And I did a drawing with this one and posted it on Twitter and I used it for a top, some kind of sweater. Um, all right, now the Aztec brush. I have no idea what to talk about to say about this one. This is a strange brush, but once I made it, uh, I just thought I've got to keep this in here and people are going to find a way to use this thing. And I don't know how or, or for what purpose, but it's just so cool to make marks with this. Uh, you know, you can, you can scrub around with it and go dark to light. Um, you can just sort of tap and stab at the canvas. You can probably hear that in my microphone as I'm just kind of attacking the canvas with this brush. Uh, but it just is a really unique kind of mark that you can make with this. So I can imagine it being used maybe in with some foliage and figuring out a way to do that. And because of that, I have a Color Dynamics version of it. It's called Aztec CD. So you can grab that and you'll notice that as you're painting with it, you're gonna get subtle color variations. See that? All not the same color, right? So we're getting some nice variations in there. Come on top of that. You can imagine how this could be good for like painting some hedges or just some uh, forest floors and whatnot. Um, maybe just painting a uh, chia pet, I don't care, right? All right, now, Moving along to the tubular brushes. Now the tubular brushes came by request. We're asking for some uh, hollow brushes um, or some outline brushes. So this is my first attempt to get some of those in here. Now what's nice about these is if you turn up the smoothing, either in Photoshop or in Fresco, these would be pretty good for lettering. So I've got the smoothing going to help me make things look nice and neat. And you can see what a nice effect that is. Obviously you can size these up or down and do what you gotta do. Remember that key command for sizing brushes up and down in Photoshop is the bracket keys, the right and left bracket keys, right? Brackets look like this, left bracket, right bracket. Okie dokie, so, but there you go. This is an outline brush. So every stroke you make is gonna have an outline and the inside will remain hollow. Now, of course, if you pick up the stylus and draw again, this is the effect you're gonna get. So if you want it to remain uh, completely solid all the way through. You're gonna have to do it all in one stroke, work on separate layers and erase out or whatever you wanna do. Um, but just wanna make sure you're aware of how those work. Okay, but as long as you're making one constant stroke, even as I pass through areas I've already drawn, you'll see what happens. It winds up creating an outline for that entire area. And that is a drawing of your upper intestines. Okay, now, we are moving on down to the grass brushes. So I've got a couple options here. Now this dry grass brush is really just a great spatter brush in general. But what I liked about it was I was thinking about it being useful for if you have, um, let's put some, some ground down here. So I've got a little landscape and let's say I wanna add a little texture to that. Maybe wanna go a little lighter. Um, I can select that. So I'm, I'm making a selection of that layer holding down the command key and tapping on the image part of the layer there. So I can paint inside of it and just using that color come through. At, it's gonna respond to the angle at which you're holding your stylus, okay? It'll also respond to pressure so it'll get larger here. So in the foreground, I wanna get that a little bigger, right? And a little smaller as I move away. And then there you go, look at that. How, look how simple and how fast it is to create a nice texture there. Go a little darker if I want for that foreground. Since we have a little bit more contrast, right? Look at that. And then maybe you're feeling, uh, you know, feeling like you want to experiment and throw in some flowers. So why not do some like pretty little flowers in there? Go for a nice light color. Just sprinkle a few of those in there with that pink, right? Why not? But there's a nice flowery field you want to run through. Um, if it's not winter where you live, I mean, this is the winter brush set, but you know, throw in a couple of blue ones as well, why not? But anyway, that is the um, dry grass brush. And so really it's just an all purpose, excellent little spatter brush. And again, it does respond to pen tilt. You can see as I move my stylus, it's angled like so. Howdy F. Smittick, nice to see you as well. 
New Brush Day, correct, New Brush Day. Uh, for the United States anyway, it's, it's they're gonna be released um, within five to 10 days in other parts of the world as well, so it shouldn't be too long, that's what I was told. Alrighty, uh, and now we have the wild grass, so I'll just go ahead and grab another grassy kind of color here, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, the wild grass brush is, well, wild grasses, okay. And if I zoom in, you can see that it's got these leafy shapes up at the top and all throughout. All right, and another brush taking advantage of color dynamics. So how would you use this? Well, what I would recommend is using a lighter color and lighter pressure to just kind of fill in an area like so. Okay, so there's my little grassy hill or whatever. And uh, once you've got that done, Use a bit more pressure to make sure that's solid and get some larger bits in the front. Then go ahead and get a slightly darker color and then just come in here and there at the front and start adding some st stabby kind of strokes. Just, you can hear me probably attacking my Wacom Cintiq here. Go a little darker and hit a couple more times. And what you're going to get then is this depth of, you know, foreground is going to have a bit more contrast. You want to pop it a little lighter just for fun. Throw a few of those in there. Whoops, that one didn't work so well. You know, you can always undo, but you get the idea. But the idea is I'm trying to add some, um, some different colors, some different sizes. And by layering it on top, you're going to get this great grassy field effect. See that? Pretty nifty. Then what you do is you throw the other wild grass on top of that. There's a wild grass one and a wild grass two. So come in with that other wild grass brush and just throw a few stalks in here and there. You can size that brush up if you want. It's already 750 pixels or somewhere in that vicinity, but go ahead and make it a little, uh, a little bigger if you like. I'll go extra dark here and see what happens if I throw a few more stalks in there. What that's doing is just breaking it up and it's adding a few more grassy lines here and there. Really nice. Now just on its own, what that brush looks like, I'll show you out here, see that? That is Wild Grass 2. So the combination of those two is gonna give you a very convincing feel of grass. And uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with that, you know. How easy is that? Just make a feel of grass in about 30 seconds. And there's just enough variety in the way those stamps are designed that uh, it won't feel repetitive. And that's the goal, right? So we're moving now to the wintry themed brushes, alrighty? And then for, for this, I'm gonna fill in my canvas with a nice dark color, come on top. And I'm gonna use white to paint. So the first one is this Frost Easy brush, Frost Easy. And let me just zoom in here so you can see how this one looks. Now again, for this one, what I like to do is just use light pressure, okay? Just to kind of get a base layer down for the frost, just face it out here and there, okay? And as you come to where you want that frost to be more dense, right, start to use a bit more pressure and just hit the canvas a few times there. And you can see what you get. You get this nice frosted effect like frost on glass or any other surface. Okay, now I'm just using more pressure as I go and there it is. So that is the effect that you get with that nice Frost Easy brush. And what you can do is you can combine it with Frost Easy 2, right? And this one, I'm just gonna add a few more bits around the edges here. And you can see what that does. This one has some more distinct kind of uh, shapes of those crystals, if you will. Okay. Now the only thing I'll say about this brush is that it takes advantage of a a um, tile for the texture that is not perfectly seamless. So be aware when you're using this that you can't cover like an enormous amount of area without exposing that, um, that tiling. Although you should be able to really cover a pretty good amount of space with it and you're gonna use it in small uh, corners here and there, so that shouldn't be an issue. But I do wanna point that out just so everyone's aware, okay? I try my best, but sometimes, you know, in order to get certain effects, I can't always make things totally seamless with the tiling. 
So the other thing we have is the frost cutout brush. Now this, as you can see from the stamp right there, if I hide that for a moment, it might be a little distracting. Let's do that. More of those lovely little snowflakey kind of patterns, okay? So if you wish, you can of course then add some of those to the edges as you go, and these will respond to pen pressure. But here's just a nice way to use all three of these brushes in combination to get that nice frosty look. And don't forget, in the latest versions of Photoshop, you can hold down the tilde key, and that's automatically gonna bring up clear mode for your brush, so that means you're erasing with that exact brush, okay? So I'm holding down the tilde key as I do this on my keyboard. Okay, and on Fresco, you can use the um, touch modifier, but to add, be additive and subtractive with these gives you some pretty nifty effects. All right, now what about snow? Well, don't worry, I got you covered. We have Flurries 1 and Flurries 2, and these are some nice snow brushes. Now they're really big, you're probably gonna to wanna to size them down for most of the things you do, but I made them really big in case somebody just wants to make some massive snow, okay? But as you can see here, really quite large. I probably wouldn't use them at this size to fill an area with snow, but um, just be aware that they are large and you can size them down. And the way these work, again, is with pen pressure, I am able to create smaller and lighter snowfall. So maybe you get that effect of snow in the distance. So it's gonna be not quite so bright and also not quite so large. And then for the extreme foreground, you know, you're gonna go crazy with your pressure and get that bigger snowfall. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. And the second one, of course, does more of the same, but different um, snowflakes as well as them being more spaced apart. So uh, this is the one that I would use for a lighter snowfall right just a dusting here and there just to show hey there's some snow happening but i don't want that to be the dominant uh, theme in the in the image or the dominant thing that distracts you right so as i zoom out you can see how that looks i'll zoom in get a good look at all the variety you get right very little repetition thanks to all the dynamics uh, that have been added all the jitter and whatnot um, so these are going to be very handy for you to do some snow and um, I was looking at some lovely, I don't know how you say the guy's name, Avind Earl, famous Disney artist, um, doing his snowy landscapes. And I was inspired to make some brushes that allow you to do these nice snowy hills. Okay, so just try these out. You can just layer them on there. Isn't that lovely? Just paint in those nice hills. Okay, different sizes. Try using different pressure. Um, but there, there's a nice brush you can use for some snowy hills. Okay, but you could also, if you wanna get creative, use that for a tree canopy or something like that, right? Why not? Um, Okie dokie. And then the drifter brush is sort of a takeoff on that where it allows me to do my own hill shapes. And the way to do this is you aim with wherever your cursor is. Okay, you draw the center of your brush is going to be where the hard edge is, okay? And everything will fall from that center point. And that's how you know um, where you're gonna be drawing the hard edge. So you see I get a hard edge on one side and this nice textured gradient on the other. Okay, now the way this brush works is it responds to pen direction. So let's say, for example, that I want the, the gradient to be on the left and the hard edge on the right, then I can draw up and down, okay? And I know that that's what's gonna happen. If I'm drawing from left to right or up and down in that direction, I'm gonna get that gradient on the left or on the inside. Okay, now if I reverse course, now I'm drawing counterclockwise or right to left, okay, or down to up, then it's going to go in the other direction. So when you know that, you can draw with confidence and you can control that effect, however you like, okay? And um, it's a fairly good size brush. It's about 800 pixels, but um, you know, you could still size it up if you need to. Um, if I go to 100%, you can see about how big it is right now. I might make a variant of this in the future that's even bigger. So you can really get this effect for much larger drawings. I'm curious to see how big it can get before it starts to feel pixelated. Let's see. 
So far so good, that's at a, 1100 pixels. Okay, so I don't know, we'll see. Maybe you could really push that and see how that goes. And I did a cool drawing for this to demonstrate how it looked um, in, uh, on, in, on Twitter. And I did something along the lines of, um, of this where I had a, a sort of a face. that. You can do some hair and then come around the top and then carve out the outside like that. So you could just really play with ways to make this look cool. Uh, I, I'm really excited to see how people wind up using this one just because I've never really made anything like it before. Which is saying something, because I've made over 1,800 brushes right now, and I gotta tell you, I'm kind of like, wow, well, what haven't I made? And I start making variations of things I've already made. But when I make something really, really totally brand new like this, I'm excited to see what people will do with it. Uh, so see what I mean? There's a, just a cool thing you can do with this, just to kind of carve out these forms. Uh, so give that a shot. Play around with it. Uh, let's see, any questions? Grass and frost brushes will be a great addition to the texture arsenal. Yes, excellent, awesome. Um, yeah, the clear mode shortcut's a goodie, and let's see, uh, wonderful brushes. Hey, thank you so much. Um, alrighty folks, well, you know, that's pretty much it, because then we're back to that felty line, which I used at the beginning. It's a nice felt brush. And so I hope you enjoyed this little preview of the brushes, and I hope you, uh, go and grab them. Remember, if you're in Photoshop, come up to the top right here, say, get more brushes. This is in your brushes panel menu right there. If you're in Fresco, bottom of the brushes panel, you're gonna to go to the plus sign and tap on that. It'll take you to the brush download page and you are good to go um, with your Creative Cloud ID. So anyway, thanks for watching and happy drawing, happy painting. Everybody have a good rest of the week. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other and uh, please be kind and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.